service. Uh, we'll have a little break, maybe 10 minutes between the two, but uh, then come back in here and gather and uh, conduct the uh, business. So the purpose is to vote on revising the budget for this year so that we can hire an interim pastor. And we'll have ample opportunity to talk about that. Uh, are there any other announcements? I'll make one announcement. There is the Valentine's party here that the youth are putting on for uh, Valentine's Day. And Jennifer in the back, if, if you want to sign up and haven't, you can see her or give her a call or email her. I think she's put out a, a number of notices on this. Uh, I may have an announcement. Oh, you do? Um, some of you may remember Ben and Elaine Rapp, who got involved with our church after they were participating in the uh, Flying J ministry when it started from the get-go. And they got involved with us for a while after that until they moved. They had a devastating fire yesterday and lost everything, including all of Ben's music instruments but the important thing was they all got out and they're safe and Red Cross is involved. So I'm waiting for an update on what they may need going forward and there will be a prayer chain going out tomorrow. So just stay tuned. They need our prayers and our help. Thanks. Thank you, Lynn. Anything else? Okay. <laughs>
former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. God's mercy makes us new. We are forgiven in the name of Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. boundless grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the wisdom of God, and the light of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and also, also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise let us pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy. help save comfort and defend us gracious Lord you're missing church for our God. Alleluia.
Let us pray. O oh God, the strength of all who hope in you, because we are weak mortals, we accomplish nothing good without you. Help us to see and understand the things we ought to do and give us grace and power to do them. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. The first lesson is from Deuteronomy chapter 30. Moses said to the people, see, I have set before you today life and prosperity, death and adversity. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I am commanding you today, by loving the Lord your God, walking in his ways, and observing his commandments, decrees, and ordinances, then you shall live and become numerous and the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to possess. But if your heart turns away and you do not hear, but are led astray to bow down to other gods and serve them, I declare to you today that you shall perish. You shall not live long in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death blessings and curses. Choose life so that you and your descendants may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying him, and holding fast to him. For that means life to you and length of days, so that you may live in the land that the Lord swore to give to your ancestors, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Happy are they whose way is blameless, who follow the teaching of the Lord. Who never do any wrong, but always walk in your Keep your statutes. I will thank you with a true heart when I have learned your righteous judgments. Second lesson is taken from the first or third chapter of Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I could not speak to you as spiritual people, but rather as people of the flesh, as infants in Christ. I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for solid food. Even now you are still not ready, for you are still of the flesh. For as long as there is jealousy and quarreling among you, are you not of the flesh and behaving according to human inclinations? For when one says, I belong to Paul, and another, I belong to Apollos, are you not merely human? What then is Apollos? What is Paul? Servants through whom you came to believe as the Lord assigned to each. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth. The one who plants and the one who waters have a common purpose, and each will receive wages according to the labor of each. For we are God's servants working together. You are God's field, God's building. Word of God, word of life. 
Thanks be to God. Gospel according to Matthew, the fifth chapter. Jesus said to the disciples, You have heard that it was said to those of ancient times, You shall not murder, and whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you that if you are angry with a brother or a sister, you will be liable to judgment. And if you insult a brother or sister, you will be liable to the council. And if you say, you fool, you will be liable to hell, to the hell of fire. So when you are offering your gift at the altar, if you remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother or sister, and then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you are on the way to court with him, or your accuser may hand you over to the judge and the judge to the guard, and you will be thrown into prison. Truly, I tell you, you will not get out until you have paid the last penny. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than for your whole body to go into hell. It was also said, whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that anyone who divorces his wife except on the ground of unchastity causes her to commit adultery. And whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Again, you have heard it said to those of ancient times, you shall not swear falsely, but carry out the vows you have made to the Lord. But I say to you, do not swear at all either by heaven, for it is the throne of God, or by the earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Do not swear by your head, for you cannot make one hair white or black. Let your word be yes, yes, or no, no. Anything more than this comes from the evil one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. You may be seated. My goodness, Jesus. <laughs> the gospel. <laughs> um, I, I'm not going to preach on the gospel, but let me just say that Jesus does have a sense of humor and does speak with uh, exaggeration, all right? He, his point was, I think, we try to justify ourselves by saying, well, I keep the Ten Commandments. Jesus says, no, there's a lot more to it than that. And as for hell, well, the real translation is Gehenna, which was the ash heap, the dump, all right? So if that makes you, we're not, we're talking about our stuff going to the dump heap, which is probably where some of that stuff should be, right? Um, so anyway, with that caveat, I really want to turn to um, to the first Corinthians text and I didn't know you were having a congregational meeting after worship, but this is a good text to pay attention to. Um, once again, we hear the Apostle Paul struggling to teach new Christians and old Christians. This church group that he was writing to had divided themselves into two groups and they were picking sides which group they were in. 
Paul's spiritual gift was reaching out to people who knew absolutely nothing about Jesus in this time of the Roman Empire. We call these people evangelists. Apollos, on the other hand, seemed really good at hanging in there and encouraging new Christians to grow in their spiritual lives because it turns out there's more to be being, being a Christian than being baptized. Living as a Christian turns out to be not so easy. It's a growing process. And apparently, growing in faith is going to take up all of our life. It takes different mentors, different gifts, different skills, different perspectives for us to grow spiritually mature. And that's why I find this passage encouraging. For one reason, I know that there are a lot of ways that I need to grow in my spiritual life. Ask my husband. <laughs> Learning how much God loves us, following Christ's teachings more closely, it's a growing thing. It takes time. So when I hear Paul taking the long view Preparing soil, planting, growing, waiting, harvesting. I take heart for me and for all of us. If we don't feel like mature Christians yet, if we're not acting like mature Christians yet, well, rest assured, God's plan is for the long term. And that encourages me. And here's another reason I'm encouraged. Paul reminds me that God's way of helping us grow is by people worshiping and sharing together, not apart. He reminds me that we do serve together, each in their own way, each with their own gifts and abilities, all of us depending on one another. Now it's become a cliche, it's so true, and I apologize for saying it. We live in very divided times. Have you heard that said about a hundred times or more? But it's true, and now it's become a habit. We divide ourselves all the time, classify people in categories. I find myself doing it. She's a this, or he's a that. It's a habit. Paul's point in this paragraph is that the body of Christ, or in this case, God's field, that yes, we are by nature very different people, but we're brought together to grow. In fact, we are stronger with our different gifts and different perspectives. You all know this. It's harder to live this. And this is true whether we are leaders like Paul and Apollos and a congregation like the Corinthians or whether we are brand new Christians. How many of you are farmers? or were farmers, or lived next to a farm. Anybody? Okay, some of you. All, all right, all right. I'm not a farmer, all right? But I appreciate them. And I learned this, this thing from reading the book Braiding Sweetgrass by Robin Kimmerer. And I later found out that lots of people know about this. Indigenous peoples on our continent, Turtle Island, called three plants, corn, beans, and squash, the three sisters, and have always grown them together on little hills, hills of soil. How many of you knew this? Okay, I'm, yes, I didn't, I, what was I missing? And so when I see corn or beans or squash planted around here in Cumberland Valley, they are usually in rows, right? Long rows and sections. Um, I don't know how to identify the, the beans so much around here, but I know the fields of squashes and pumpkins, and I know the fields of corn. They're in rows. But Native Americans do it differently. They plant around the, little, uh, the, around the middle of May in hills, and each hill contains a corn seed, a squash seed and a bean seed. And they call themselves 
they call them the three sisters. So we are going to use our imaginations. I want each of you to pick one of those seeds in your head. Are you a corn seed? Are you a bean seed today? Or are you a squash seed today? All right, how many corn seeds do we have? All right, how many bean seeds do we have? All right, how many squash seeds do we have? You are about evenly divided, which is wonderful. We need all of you. All right, so you got, you know the seed you are, so here we are using our imaginations. The first to germinate and appear on that little hill are you corn seeds. Your new whitish stems are quickly greening up in the sun. Can you see it? And you grow into a straight and strong stalk and your long leaves are unfolding away from your stems so that they catch the sun so that you can grow taller. The second sister to emerge are you the beans. You take longer to emerge because you've been busy sending down your roots down deep below where the corn's roots are because the corn has shallow roots. Your beans are work, your bean roots are working together with the bacteria to take nitrogen from the air and turn it into fertilizer, which fuels the growth of the corn and the squash and yourself. You, the bean, don't focus on height at first like the corn does. You just want to make a lot of leaves. But about the time the corn is knee high, that is the time where you let the corn stalk is stronger and you have tendrils and your tendrils are ready for the climbing phase. And so those tendrils start climbing around the corn's stalk and you climb that stalk because you need its support to get light, you gotta get up there and get the light to make the flowers, to make the bean pods. And you need the corn support so that you can hold the bean pods without them falling over. Your vine would strangle the corn, except by the time you begin climbing, the corn stalk is already strong and tough enough to hold you. Now the last to emerge, are you the squash seeds? You have wide prickly leaves that deter insects for yourselves and for others. And you spread across the ground, grabbing any light you can find underneath the, the beans and the corn. And you have a gift for the other two sisters. Your leaves also serve as a com uh, covering over the ground to keep the moisture in there for everybody so the sun doesn't evaporate it. So there you are, corn, bean, and squash plants complementing one another for space. The author writes, and she's a scientist as well as a Native American, she writes, Three acres of corn, bean, and squash planted together out yields one acre each of corn, beans, and squash. There are more reasons for you to be good partners with one another that I won't go into. You can read the book, which is full of all sorts of indigenous wisdom, as well as about community working together, braiding sweetgrass. But the final outcome of the corn, bean, and squash hill is the nutritional value for the humans who planted you. You, the corn, are the source of starch, a carbohydrate, that all winter people need for energy. 
and you beans are high in protein and you fill in the gaps left by the corn and you squash especially you warm you orange winter squash you are rich in vitamins so now you can be humans again and enjoy your meal according to the apostle paul you and i together are god's garden but i would contend that we are not a one crop all in a row farm we as followers of jesus are more like the three sisters or more cooperating and working together with the strengths that each of us have been given growing mature and bringing a good harvest a long corn is just a stalk a bean is just divine a squash is an oversized leaf but our gifts are more fully expressed when they're nurtured together and so here in this space of saint stephen's on this we'll call it a hill who are the christians that are most different from you you need them to grow you know and who are those nearby lutheran congregations in your area you need them too and who are the people in your friends and family that are different from you different theology different beliefs different lifestyles different cultures different looking different abilities different ways of being a family you need them and what are they really good at that inspires you to grow in your own faith and way of serving god and how are their different strengths an inspiration to you or could be an in inspiration if you would really listen to grow in your own faith and your own way of serving god and how are their different strengths and gifts how are the different strengths and gifts that god has given you for the benefit of god's community around you how do they fit in well, these are a lot of questions to ask for, for reflection, so you'll have time to think about that. But basically, I want you to remember this today, in your council meetings, in the future, your differences, each one of you, are needed as gifts. God made you different for a reason. And it's always God, always God, Paul says, that gives the growth. Amen. Yes, I am. <laughs>
into one by the Holy Spirit, let us profess our faith and using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, <clears throat> creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Called together to follow Jesus, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Inspire your church that it may be a sign of life throughout the world. From the exploration of faith with children and new believers to missionaries and bishops, shape lives of faithfulness so that all find abundant life in your ways. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Nourish your creation, accompany all who plant and water. Bless the work of farmers, provide for subsistence farmers facing drought. Guide the work of agricultural scientists towards sustainable ways to feed the world. Merciful God, give growth where there seems to be no hope for life in nations and regions where reconciliation seems impossible. Empower peacemakers with your spirit. Where death holds sway through violence, disease, and hunger, equip relief workers to bring hope. Merciful God, nurture all in need. Bring healing to all who experience trauma caused by systems of injustice and destructive relationships. Give courage to those struggling to repent and those seeking reconciliation. Sustain all who work for restoration. Merciful God, encourage this congregation. Call us to a common purpose and keep us from quarreling. Turn our hearts toward you and guide our leaders so that our choices may be life-giving for all. Merciful God, Thanks be to you for the lives of all who have died in Christ. Teach us to follow them in your ways and gather us with them into the promise of eternal life with you. Merciful God. Are there others for whom we should pray? Brandy? For all those involved in the earthquake. Ben and Elaine Rapp. And for those in the midst of war. Lord, in your mercy. We bring to you our needs and hopes, O oh God, trusting your wisdom and power revealed in Christ crucified. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us show a sign of that peace.
So I want to thank you all for your gifts that you are giving to this congregation to further um, its ministry um, in this place and in the neighborhood and in the world. And also I want to remind you those at home um, with uh, the bread that you were using or the juice and wine that you were using. So when I lift them up and uh, you may lift them up, it's the same with those of you who are using the little kits provided for you here. And also, if there are any leftovers, remember to give them back to the earth. Um, put them outside for the birds and the creatures in the soil. Please stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star, he was shown forth to all nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed your beloved Son. And in the miracle of water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so with all the choirs of angels and with the church on earth and with the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs> the beginning and the end, the giver of life. Blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son Jesus, the word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you, do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. Come, oh, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us. Bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people. Fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. Come, Holy Spirit. Spirit. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 
Come and taste the joy of God.
Please stand as you are able. Let us pray. Holy One, we give thanks to you for the healing that springs forth abundantly from this table. Renew our strength to do justice, love kindness, and journey humbly with you. Amen. Hear God's blessing as God sends us out. The God who faithfully brings forth justice and breaks the oppressor's rod bless and strengthen you and uphold you today and always. Amen. Peace, follow the way of Jesus. Thanks be to God. We will. Yeah, that's what it's supposed to say. It's beautiful. <laughs>